CA. Ocala. Five minutes before eleven o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. One of the things we want to we want to never see in the news again is a shooting at a school. We never ever mm-hmm. want to see that again, right? Mm-hmm. And gosh, I, w- I would it would be wonderful as somebody who does the news. Nevertheless, somebody who's a father and a, and just a human being living, uh, you don't you don't want to see this ever. And yet. The reality is there are people out there who want to find uh, soft targets. So a soft target is a school full of elementary school children and, and elementary school teachers whose only desire in life is to make life perfect for these little new lives that are, that are entering the world and, and learning how to read and, 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 and write and do math. Uh, John R. Beyer has written a very insightful book. He is a clinical psychologist. He served in law enforcement as a street cop, it says here. My father would have hated the word cop, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's a, tr- a training officer, a member of the SWAT entry team, and he's a sniper, um, an administrator, and he's written a book called Soft Target. It's a novel about an Islamic terrorist takeover of an American middle school Um School shootings and violence in schools is the topic in general. Uh, John Byer, good morning, John. Thank you for coming on the air with us today. Well, good morning. I'm glad to be with you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from sunny but dry Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> is it dry? I thought you guys had all your reservoirs filled up now. No? That would... uh, that's, that's, that's what they tell us, but uh, I live in Southern California, so we're hoping the snowpack in the Sierras will, will play out through the summer for us, but uh, it's, it's helping. Eventually. So as a law enforcement, I mean, you, you've really put in your time in law enforcement. So as with your background, when you see stories like out of Connecticut or the, what was that one? Was it in uh, the Netherlands? What was that one? Uh, oh, that was at the island that those terrorists went to an island. Right. Yeah. And shot the school ch- uh, children. They were on resort. They were on vacation. And nobody had a gun except for the terrorists. No. The terrorists yeah. only, even the security guards didn't have guns, right? Well, they're not allowed to in, in, in that part yeah, of the world. Yeah, just yeah. like how we have, you know, uh, gun safe zones, which just, uh, to me, from law enforcement, is just a uh, magnet for those that have guns. So that's what you mean by a soft target? Yes. Uh, soft target can be schools, unfortunately. I mean, that, we see that played out, and I heard your intro way too often in this country. But I think a lot like Sandy Hook, things like that, those schools are... Um, not much we can do with people that have mental issues, and that, that might be an issue that we need to discuss how to deal with that. But if a school or hospitals or things do not allow weapons and security have mace and, and handcuffs, that's not going to stop an intruder that has the intention of causing massive uh, uh, casualties, shall we say. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, took, uh, you took the concept that we're talking about and you wove it into a story. Yes. Yes, I did. Uh, and and is this a first book for you, or have you written other? Uh, you know, tell me about your writing. Oh no, I used to write for a magazine years ago, and then when I worked on my doctorate, all that took side. And this is my second novel through Black Opal Books. My first one was called Hunted. It's about uh, a police officer, and a uh, serial killer goes after him. So he becomes the hunted. The police officer becomes the hunted. Okay. And then this novel. But my third one will be coming out in 2017 through the, my publisher, uh, Black Opal Books. Okay. And uh, you you just don't focus on the um, uh, uh, mentally deranged, but you focus on, on groups like the uh, Islamic ex- ex- extremists that are so prevalent now. Well, yes. I mean, and look what they just arrested the general. Uh, well, I apologize. They arrested the uh, suspect in Belgium over the weekend. And what did he say? He had more attacks planned. Right. Yeah. From, yeah. from France, yeah. from Paris. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we, it's, it, we're, we're in a war. We're in, and I think we need to realize that, that we need to look at schools. We need to look at hostels. We need to look at what I refer to as soft targets. You hear it in the news all the time. 
that w- what do we do to protect ourselves? I, no one wants to live in a military occupied country, but we do have to take common sense uh, approach to some of this stuff. Do we have higher security guards that have guns? Do we have people that have concealed weapon permits allowed to carry them as long as they go through a thorough background check? Mm-hmm. Being in education, I'm not I'm not opposed to certain people on school uh, schools to have uh, weapons to protect. Now, again, a thorough background, because one of my things is that if you have people that are just dressed as civilians, they're not normally um, suspected of having a weapon. But if you have a security guard with a weapon, they're the first targets, of course, for a plan. Like I said earlier, if, if you've got a, a deranged individual, not much you can do to stop them. Right, right. I mean, you might, you might be able to um, reduce the carnage they create if somebody has a weapon. But these Islamic terrorists, they are plan. They're, they plan. They they believe you know dying is a great thing for them, a great honor. So those are the folks that I'm talking about in this book. That's why the middle school um, takeover, which I know is unfortunate, but I took it from the 2004 horrific, horrific carnage in um, Beslan in um, uh, North Caucasus in Russia, right, where right, right. where you know 1,100 people taken captive, and probably closer to five or 600. My research says that were killed, children and and adults. Uh, Russians say 385, but I think mm-hmm. it's a much higher number than that. Now, um, Adam Lanza from the the Sandy Hook incident, he was not uh, he was an extremist for sure, but not an extremist Muslim. He was not Muslim. Am I wrong about that? No, you, no, you're correct. Sandy Hook, that, that was a totally different case. And, oh, my God, he, he uh, murdered his mother and then went to the school. Hmm. There, were, there was mental issues. And, and I think a lot of the blame, if we go back, of course, the mother's the past, of course. But I think if we look back at his history, there was um, triggers that people that knew him said that he did have mental issues or mm-hmm. at least should have been um, investigated. And, and this goes on all the time. And now in California... Um, they, we just passed, the legislation just passed January 1st that if a family member believes another family member has mental issues, uh, be that domestic violence, which is more than just mental issues, and they have weapons, then the police can actually confiscate the weapons. I'm not 100% good with that. Um, I think that kind of violates some of these constitutional rights uh, without being uh, judged mentally disabled or mentally insane that the police have a right to come in. It, doesn't, it hasn't happened yet. But that, that policy's in. Again, like I said, I'm a pretty strict uh, Second Amendment guy, so I don't like the idea yeah, that right, anybody right. In, did, come did, in. When, when we hear about um, ISIS being able to recruit American young people, and, and uh, see, I'm, I'm not trying to isolate young people uh, as opposed to old people, but, but that's what we hear, and we're hearing it's yeah. young, young people that are somehow being attracted to this. God only knows why they would be attracted to this. Um, but, but if... <sighs> If we're going to pin them with the extreme uh, Muslim viewpoint, then it's kind of by proxy because I, I think some of these kids couldn't care less about religion. Maybe they're just swearing they've the allegiance to it, but it's probably a false allegiance, and they just want to wreak havoc. Is what I think. I don't know. Well, you know, um, I, I, there's a gentleman named uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. Uh, he's a psychiatrist, uh, a retired military. And he has a book and a, and a whole uh, program called Killology, the uh, psychological effects of actually killing other humans. And one of his statements is that he is a proponent of getting rid of, um, or at least watching these uh, violent video games. And you mentioned it is the younger folks. But if you watch too many of these violent video games that students and in, in, um, young men, men, mainly it's young men, watch, they get desensitized to the fact of killing. I and think now you're I right. And ISIS has now given them that news and, hey, you know, you watch our programs on, I mean, they are wonderful in, in, in uh, multimedia, I mean, to, to, get, uh, to re- recruit, like you said. So what they do is they recruit these folks and they basically say, hey, you don't have to play video games. We're going to give you the real thing, and which I think is a draw for a lot of wow. disenchanted youth in the country. But if we think of it that way, instead of sitting in mom's basement playing video games, yeah. you, you can actually go to the field and, and try it. Now, we just had that um, one American just turn himself in to the Kurds uh, last week and said, uh, I really didn't think this through. Right. You know, when he, so hopefully they'll start thinking through. And, 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 I, and, I, yeah. and I guess we'll never know uh, the truth behind Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols. I, I don't know. It's I don't know what the, what their deal was. I, I don't know. But it, well, that, was just, that was just, you know, 
they were terrorists, but they were, they were um, homegrown terrorists. They had some uh, grudge against the United States government. I mean, a lot of people do. I mean, people have grudges against the IRS and stuff. But what makes them trigger to the point of killing innocents and mainly children? I've, I've been right. to that memorial in Oklahoma City, and I mean, uh, it's it's gut wrenching. It's gut wrenching, right. and right. to think that somebody could actually plan that and think this is a way to get back at the government. I, even as a psychologist, it's hard to fathom what goes through someone's mind to say it is it is perfectly fine to kill civilians who all they want to do is go home and right. play with their children. Right, right. We have a need. You're a psychologist. You know this better than I do. You can probably articulate it better than I'm, I'm going to try to do right now. But we have a need, for, for whatever reason, to identify the enemy. And in, in the past, we identified the enemy by uniform. Okay, the Nazis. Okay, that's a Nazi. He's a bad guy, so he got, he's got to go. You know, he's got an American flag on his shoulder. Okay, he's a good guy. He stays, right? Uh, but now nowadays, it's, it's impossible to really know. You can't really know. You can't, you can't, say, you can't do the, fo- the foolish thing would be to say it's all Muslims. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. I mean, how many... Well, that's, that, that. That is that is wrong because the majority of Muslims, like the majority of Christians, are just wonderful folks. You know, I'm Catholic, and I remember the IRA in, in Ireland, and I couldn't I couldn't say, yeah. wait a minute, they're, they're, they don't represent me. I'm a Catholic. There that doesn't go. represent my faith. Just like the majority, 99 percent of Muslims out there are saying, hey, that that's not us. Right, right. So but it's the, it, the, it is hard to put a blanket statement out there as to who to be on the lookout for. We don't know. We don't know who to be on the lookout for. But Larry, I mean, this thing that just happened in San Bernardino, which is only about 25 miles from, from where I, I reside, those people were on um, the watch. Uh, neighbors saw strange activity going on, yeah. you know, people coming in and out all night. And the woman next door said, I didn't. I wanted to report them, but I didn't because I don't want to be considered a, a racist or a, a Islamophobic or, you know, whatever, because mm-hmm. she knew they were Muslim. Right, and right. maybe that's what we need to do, and the government needs to do a little bit better job of saying, okay, we, we need to report things and, and not, not be afraid of this political correctness. I that's don't mean, a good you know, point. Yeah, that's a really good point, yeah. And, uh, and I don't mean pointing the fingers at everyone, but, you know, if we're going to stop this, I mean, we have the capability, the United States government has the capability of monitoring. They, they monitor, they stop um, terrorist attacks all the time. Maybe they need to make it more public that this yeah. is what we're doing. And, and, oh, we had a know, st- it's our job. We had a story here in Florida maybe a year ago or so, and it was one of those non-stories. And, and I said to Rob, and I said, this... This this deserve these guys deserve a medal. It was the law enforcement guys down in Tampa. They thwarted a big terrorist attack, and I, I can't give you the details. Just, I'm doing it from memory. But bottom line is, they they foiled an attempt, to, a plan to do some massive damage down in the mm-hmm. Ybor City area. I think yeah. right. They were going to bomb somebody or, yeah. or or shoot a bunch of people, yeah. and and they stopped it from happening. So the next day in the news, it was just a tiny story. And I said to Robert, if these guys hadn't done the, their work, the law enforcement didn't do their work. Yeah. And how many stories like that do we do we not know about where every single day people's lives are not snuffed out because the law enforcement uh, police officer or an agency did their job? You just don't well, hear I it. agree. I agree, and I and I believe, and I might be wrong on this. In January, the the FBI and, and obviously other law enforcement agencies working in concert stopped like 14 um, planned attacks. We this is what we need to know. Maybe the media needs to do a little bit more um, investigation, a little bit more storytelling, and saying this is what's going on. Yes, yes. Instead of waiting for like a San Bernardino and, and everybody throws their hands up, my oh my god, how this get away? Yeah, absolutely. And the government says, wait a minute, we stopped five more of those last month. Yeah. No, you're right. We need to, we need to celebrate the the successes instead of always pointing out the ones where the bad guys win, or at least appear to win. True. Um, John, we need to take a little break. We'll be right back. This is a fascinating oh. conversation. The book is called Soft Target. We haven't really been fair to the book, so let's make sure we talk about the book on the other side of the break. Uh, John R. Beyer is the author of the book Soft Target. We'll be right back after this. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunny to partly cloudy today. Brisk and cooler with a high of 63 to 66. Clear and moonlit tonight. Also chilly with a low of 37 to 50. Tomorrow will turn warmer, mostly sunny with a high of 71 to 75. Looks beautiful Wednesday. Sunshine and high of 77 to 81. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. 
Want to learn more about your furnace or air conditioner? Tune in this Saturday for free tips and expert advice on how to get the most out of your heating and air conditioning system. Or get a free AC rejuvenation by being the first person to go to cleanmyac.com. That's cleanmyac.com. Saturday, free tips and expert advice on how to get the most out of your heating and air conditioning system. Or get a free AC rejuvenation by being the first person to go to cleanmyac.com. That's cleanmyac.com. You already know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information, yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and it applies to you. Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Information provided by Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. Visit George Mangan Insurance today at www.mangininsurance.com. Hi, this is Vanessa Lane Jennings with the Jennings Law Firm, located here in beautiful Ocala. Join me every single Friday at 1030 for Legal Lane. We'll be discussing various legal topics such as family law, criminal law, contracts, and much more. So this is your chance to call in with your legal questions and have them answered. That's every Friday, 1030, right here, WOCA, The Source. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your mobile Verizon rep. But not just here, I'll deliver the phone to you in your home. While I'm there, I'll only sell you what you need and I'll personalize it to you. Want to have me get you connected? Then call me at 352-528-0020. I even offer unlimited home phone service for just $20 per month. Just call me, your mobile Verizon rep, at 352-528-0020. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. The most trusted name in news. Fox News. Every half hour. Only on 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. The Source. W-O-C-A. All right, eight minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you're looking at the streaming uh, video, I just put the, uh, the cover shot of the book, Soft to Target, on the, on the video feed. So uh, you can see the, the cover of the book. It's got the Wilkins Middle School in, in the, the crosshairs there. John R. Beyer is the author of the book, and he's on the phone with us. And uh, hopefully you heard the first part and, and got a, a little bit of a background into this uh, subject matter. Is Wilkins Middle School a real school? I'm sorry? Is Wilkins Middle School, is that a real school? No, it is not. Uh, for liability purposes, I yeah. could not use a, a real name. Yeah, thank goodness. I was thinking you, yeah, that'd be a good <laughs> idea. All right. So I, I would not want my child going there if that was real school. No, absolutely. You, you know, normally we start with who's the, tell me about the protagonist. Tell me about the antagonist, the bad guy. That guy is a um, Azul, and what he is, he's the one that sets it all up from uh, a penthouse in Las Vegas at, at the Wind Towers there. And he, he is communicating with his forces on the ground in Victorville, which is a, a real town, um, and, and he's directing the activity on the ground from, uh, from uh, Las Vegas. Okay, and uh, now tell me about the protagonist. Who's the good guy? His name is Yuri Swalok, and he's a uh, ex uh, Russian, um, we call him special forces. He was in Beslan. He witnessed it all. Um, he was uh, uh, one of the ones that actually br went into the school, stopped the terrorists from any more carnage that they'd already created, and then he retires after his family is um, blown up by extremists. And he comes to the United States, and he actually goes on a tour, a speaking tour with Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. And um, and talking about the dangers and, and soft targets that are available, and what to, what our law enforcement needs to do. Hmm. So so Yuri arrives after he's committed an atrocity. Yes, Yuri arrives in uh, California. He's doing a, um, a he's at a, co a convention discussing Beslan and and talking to local law enforcement agencies from Southern California and saying, this is what we need to look for. This is what you need to do. Don't worry about sometimes uh, police looking more like military. You are fighting people that are 
partly military, yeah. or at least paramilitary. They're coming in with RPGs and rocket grenades. They're coming in with automatic rifles. This isn't the lone craze gunman that you have to deal with, two gunmen. This is, you know, we had 20 some odd uh, in my book, sure. uh, Soft Target. We had like 20 some odd soldiers, uh, Islamic terrorists, hitting this school. Yeah, yeah. And they came in with, they came in with jammers, which, uh, cell phone jammers, which are illegal in the United States, but they had everything ready to go, yeah. exactly what they did. Well, and, and you're making a point when you say illegal in the United States, because that's the same argument we have as, as gun supporters. Uh, gun ownership supporters is that if you make it illegal, guess what? It'll still exist. Yeah. It'll only mm-hmm. exist in the hands of those who do so illegally. It's exactly. the it's, it's the bumper sticker message. If you if you outlaw guns, guns will be only outlaws will have guns. Exactly, and, that, and that's what we, we do. And then, you know, we had um, the military giving police agencies around the United States uh, a couple of years ago, and now do, do, then we had complaints from certain aspects of the political um, parties saying, oh, they look like military. Well, if you're going against AK-47s yeah, really. and rocker grenades yeah. and IEDs, we need it. I mean, I was a patrol officer. Let me tell you, my, my, the police car I drove, my unit, uh, would not withstand anything. Because I've had, you know, windshield blowing out and stuff like that from just small arms um, during some times. And um, it's kind of scary. I'd rather go in and SWAT. We, we did have the Bears. Those are those big armored vehicles. Sure, we had yeah. those to go in because you have to. Because you don't know exactly what you're going into. Yeah, that's a really good point. I appreciate the fact that you're saying that. And uh, also you were a, 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 a victim of terrorism in Spain. You, you were shot. <laughs> Well, um, yes, I was. I was shot in the head, and all those years in law enforcement, I had been shot at, but never hit, thank God, and I was on vacation, and I was sitting, talking to a gentleman, practicing my Spanish. He was practicing his uh, English, and we were having a nice cold beverage on a, uh, in Alicante, Spain. It was a beautiful afternoon, and all of a sudden, neo-Nazis started parading, and then the communists came in to disturb them, and next thing you heard was... Pam, 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 like that, and I knew the sound. I threw uh, his name was Miguel. I threw him to the ground, and a bullet from a twenty-five caliber um, ricocheted off my beer mug into my head. But luckily, it landed between my scalp and my uh, skull, and they were able to drop. Oh my and, God! So, did anybody die in that in that incident? No, no, no. Some injured, but nobody died. No. Did any of the civilians no. have guns, or do they not allow that there? Well, well some, somebody had a gun because somebody shot the twenty five caliber. But the police were there, and how it happened, because once I got shot, they took me to the hospital, so I don't really remember uh, much after that, to be honest with you. Yeah. But it was, um, it, it's a great uh, storytelling um, tale that I use, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, 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 you mentioned... still drink beer? Do you still drink beer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Of course, such. Yeah, I'm a writer. We drink. Okay. <laughs> what was it? Hemingway once said... Uh, uh, right, 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 drunk and edit sober. I, 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 I write sober. I can't write drunk. <laughs> so you mentioned anyway, you mentioned earlier about forgetting being politically uh, correct, and if you see somebody suspicious, turn them in. And I, I like that message. And I want to compare it to this when it's turned something in, not somebody with something. In New York, which is where I'm from, the, the subways all have, ever since 911, and still to this day, in probably every car, they have a sign or two that says, if you see a, a, a left package, something, a, a package by itself, mm-hmm. don't touch it, call 911. Anything. If, if you that- see, yeah, if you see, if you see a backpack underneath the, the seat in the subway, and there's nobody near it. Don't touch it. Call nine one one. But is it, isn't that the same announcements we hear every time we go to the airport? Do not leave your bag unattended, or the, it will be confiscated. Right, right. So it's the same thing. If you see something suspicious, if I saw somebody come into an airport, throw down a backpack, and kind of walk away quickly, I'm going to tell someone. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the that's but, that's where we should all be. Yeah. Right, but but yet if we see. You know, you live in an apartment complex somewhere and you see neighbors coming in and out all night. I mean, it could be drug dealing. It could be innocent. It could be what happened in San Bernardino. Right. And San Bernardino is not going to be nice. I mean, I hope it is. You know, we always say that and we pray that those things don't happen. But, you know, we have to be realistic and pragmatic and say, you know, it's not going to be an isolated incident. Right. Uh, I have the uh, copy of the book, Soft Target. If you want the copy that John sent to us, you can call me right now, and it'll be yours. The number is 622-9622. The rest of us have to go buy it. Uh, can you give us a website so we can go buy the book? 
uh, Black Opal, uh, BlackOpalBooks.com, uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, and any online bookstore, you can you can find it. Okay, and I found it real easy on, uh, what did, where did I find this, on Amazon? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I found it on, uh, oh, BookOfTheDay.org is where I found it, BookOfTheDay.org. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you so much, John. That was a great eye-opening conversation. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Hey, thank you both, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Presidential hopefuls going before thousands of pro-Israel voters today at the American Israel Public Affairs Committee conference. Hillary Clinton telling the audience... Candidates for president who think the United States can outsource Middle East security to dictators or that America no longer has vital national interests at stake in this region are dangerously wrong. GOP rivals Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and John Kasich due to speak later. An investigation continues into the killing of a Pennsylvania turnpike toll collector and a guard west of Harrisburg.